Extraordinary Mission, Light. An unusual mission also requires unusual training, and this is given to the human being by God himself, whose soul offers itself to God for this mission. This extraordinary task consists of giving people a living example of the working of the Spirit in the last days, in the coming battle of faith, of providing them with proof of the connection between the earthly and the spiritual world, of God's direct connection with people on earth. This is no easy task, for the human being has to work very hard on himself in order to attain a degree of maturity which allows for this evidence. He has to live according to God's will in order to be able to be used as his instrument, and he has to absorb great knowledge in order to be able to testify to God's love, wisdom and omnipotence. The imparting of this knowledge happens through regular instructions which the human being has to accept of his own free will. He must want, that is desire, wisdom from God, otherwise it cannot be offered to him. Hence the mission is entirely dependent on his free will, and it is this will which now also enables the human being to accomplish the task given to him, for only a strong will will stand firm and steadfastly pursue its goal in the last days of the battle of faith. The knowledge which is presented to the human being on God's behalf and by God himself gives him clear knowledge about the original beginning and final goal of every work of creation and thus also of the human being himself. But as soon as the human being has this knowledge he strives towards God, and through a life of love he unites himself with him. And now light and strength can flow into him. The Spirit of God can work in the human being, thus the human being himself can testify to God's love, omnipotence and wisdom. But such a testimony can help the unbelievers to believe. And this is the purpose, it is the task incumbent upon the human being who is trained by God himself for his mission. He should use all his knowledge and insight to change unbelief into faith by passing on his knowledge, by serving his fellow human beings as an example of the success a life of faith can result in and how closely the human being can unite with God if he has the right faith, thus also lives out what the right faith demands. In order to impressively prove the truth to fellow human beings a person must be able to present himself as an example, he must always be able to establish a direct connection with God, and the success of such a connection must be obvious to fellow human beings, then it will be made easy for them to believe, and this is an extraordinary help for the unbelievers which God grants to those who only listen to his servants, thus who do not reject them unheard. And yet, it is a mission which requires a strong will, for in order to reach this degree of maturity, that he, as a true servant of God, is suitable for this work, he must constantly strive upwards, he must constantly let his will become active, for he will not be influenced or forced into knowledge against his will but he must acquire it himself, he must strive for every divine instruction of his own free will request it and put himself into a state that he is able to hear God's voice. It is an extraordinary process which, however, is also extraordinarily effective if only it is heeded. The human beings will earn him knowledge, and this knowledge in turn is intended to stimulate his fellow human beings will to reach the same state of spiritual maturity. People can only be placed into a bright state by transmitting wisdom from the spiritual kingdom, for light comes from the heavens but earth is in darkness as long as the light from the heavens does not touch it. Darkness is ignorance, darkness is a state without any spiritual knowledge and therefore a state of remoteness from God, for God himself is the light, God is wisdom, and thus nearness to God means knowledge of pure truth. And thus this truth has to be conveyed to people who are distant from God so that their distance from God will be thereby reduced.
provided that the human being has the will to approach him. But what is currently offered from person to person on earth is no longer the pure truth, instead, it is often contaminated by erroneous teachings and additions which do not correspond to the truth. As a result the ray of light is clouded, it no longer has the strength of its original effect, it is a twilight in which people wander about, undecided about the path they should take and hardly recognizing the right one. And it is extremely difficult to bring a bright ray of light into this twilight, for people do not like to accept a light bearer, they feel comfortable in their state of twilight and fear that a bright ray of light could reveal what they would like to keep hidden. And therefore the paths of a light bearer will not be very paved by people, and if God himself would not lead him by the hand his attempt would be unsuccessful, the light would be extinguished before it could exert its effect. And that is why it requires a strong will, a constant connection with God, the eternal light, a constant reception of light and strength and free will and a profound unshakable faith to be able to carry out this mission with God's help. And where God finds such a will and a joyful devotion to him, there the supply of knowledge from the spiritual kingdom to earth can also proceed, and all spiritual beings of light are willing to convey this knowledge, the spiritual truth, to the human being on God's behalf. Thus a work had to begin which appears extraordinary for people on earth but which also initiates an extraordinary mission, to bring pure, truth to people, to offer something purely spiritual to earthly minded people in order to thereby guide them into the right realization. This is an extraordinary undertaking and yet it has to be tackled in order to bring salvation to the erring souls which do not completely close t themselves to the effect of the rays of light before the end has come, which is imminent. Amen.